Here we are again for a five-minute sermon. Uh, as always, thankful for your time, and I pray that by God's grace this will benefit you. Today I want to talk about grief. Grief is a deep and poignant distress caused by bereavement or deprivation, whatever that might be. Primarily, we think of grief in terms of death. Grief can come through many other avenues, though. So as we suffer grief, as we suffer loss, as we suffer difficulty, it can bring us to a dark and hopeless place. And I just want to take a few minutes to look at something that I refer to a lot. But it is the fact that we, as followers of Jesus Christ, grieve, but not without hope. So we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Continues on, and we're going to continue through the end of the chapter here. Here's why we grieve with hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words, my friends. Encourage one another with this hope and future glory, with the coming of our Lord Jesus. Encourage one another in the fact that since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, he was raised from the grave. And that he will take those who have died, or here as it says, fallen asleep, bring those who died with him. Now very often this is a passage that is used and justifiably so in many ways, but it's used for argumentation. And so sometimes in the argument we fail to see verse 18, therefore encourage one another with these words. Whether we have a pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pre-mill, ah-mill, post-mill, eschatological set of views, the fact is, is this is supposed to be an encouragement to those who are in Christ. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. We together, in Christ, understand that there is going to come a day then when we are brought together with him, standing victoriously, in which we will not suffer tears anymore, in which death will have lost fully its sting when we will be knit together behind the victorious Savior and King, standing and being able to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords, he is now, but he will be for us in a particular and special way. And in that we rejoice and look forward to. And so we grieve as those, we suffer deep and poignant distress as those who have hope. that are not hopeless in this world. Yes, we have the inextricable reality of, of, of deep distress filled with an expectation of good to happen in the future. And somehow in the complex of the human emotion, we, we navigate that. But by God's grace, we always resolve in the beautiful reality that we have this hope. The settled and expectant assurance of the promises of God. And so Christian, as we grieve in this life, May we grieve with hope, that beautiful, bitter but sweet reality of having an expectation of future glory. By God's grace, may we stand with him in that beautiful reality. God bless you.